Good morning and welcome to worship. If you are here on site today, you should have received the bulletin when you came in. Everything you need is in your copy of the bulletin, whether you have the large print or the regular. And that bulletin is also available on our website for those of you joining us online, uh, messiahoaklandnj.org, that's our website handle. <laughs> and again, everything you need is in your copy of the bulletin. Our prayers today are the same prayer petitions that we used all summer, so they should be familiar to you. And we invite you during that time to lift up your prayers, either out loud or silently, drop them in the chat or in the comments, knowing that whatever way that you pray, God hears your prayers. Lastly, if you are here on site, we offer three different ways to participate in Holy Communion. You can either have those prepackaged elements from your seats, or you may come up here to the altar rail. At the altar rail, you can either take the prepackaged elements or you can take an empty cup that will be filled with grape juice and you'll be given a wafer. All options are available to you. If you're joining us online, all are welcome at God's table using whatever bread, wine, crackers, or grape juice that you have at home. Lastly, as always here at Messiah, worship is yours to make meaningful. Stand if you want to stand, sit if you want to sit. We've got some awesome music today, so I have a feeling there will be some dancing. Create a meaningful experience for you in whatever way that looks like. That being said, please join me in a worship position. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance. Let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We are going to pray the body prayer today. So if this is new to you or we haven't done it in a while, you're going to want to put your bulletin down. You might need a little bit of space. This is not an opportunity to smack your neighbor, even if you want to. I'm watching you in the front row over here. But there are many different ways to pray, and praying with our hands and our body can be a helpful way to engage our mind. So please join me as you are able. Begin by extending your hands, palms up, indicating your receptiveness to God's words spoken today. And repeat after me. Thank you, God, that your ways and thoughts are far greater than ours. Now pull your hands slowly toward your chest to remind yourself that you are internalizing and embracing God's life-giving word and spirit. And repeat after me, you hear our prayers and know our hearts. You are holy and just. Now extend your hands back out with your palms down, symbolizing that you are releasing anxieties and letting go of trying to control things. Instead, you are overflowing with God's love for others. And repeat after me, your words bring us purpose and hope. Amen. A reading from James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 54 responsively. Save me, O God, by your name. In your might, defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life those who have no regard for God. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. I will offer you a free will sacrifice and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from every trouble and my eye looks down on my enemies.
Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and the disciples went on and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But the disciples were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it into his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. You. you may be seated. We're all over here today. So I have a question. Who knows what prayer is? Jack? When you ask God to help you. Yeah, that's our God moment chain, right? The places we've seen God. So prayer can be a way that we ask God to help us, but even more simple, it can just be talking to God, right? Whether you need help, whether you want to say thank you, whether you want to say where you've seen God. So what do you think you can talk to God about? Jack, if you're scared, that's a great thing to talk to God about. Any other thoughts? Ethan, what do you talk to God about? I love it. We can talk to God when we don't know. Absolutely. Grown-ups, what do you talk to God about? When you're ill? Things you're worried about? One more time guidance things you're happy about when you're thankful your everyday life we can talk to God about everything right can you talk to God when like you're a little annoyed at your sibling <laughs> yep Ethan's Ethan, Ethan's little bobblehead back there yep yeah God's a good person to talk to about that so Another question about prayer, where, that is the coolest drawing I've ever seen. Wow. You'll have to show us later, Ethan. I know you're shy. <laughs> where can you talk to God? Jack? Right now? Uh-huh. Did you hear what Mr. Rubner said? Anywhere, right? You can talk to God in here. You can talk to God while you're walking. You can talk to God while you're in the shower or while you're driving. I know another favorite place you like to talk to God. Before going to bed. Ethan. When you're hiking. I love it. <laughs> so that you don't get eaten by a bear. <laughs> I don't think you need to be hiking to see a bear around here. <laughs> Anyone else have a favorite place to pray? On your walks. For me, it's definitely driving. And I'm notorious for starting a conversation with God and then like two hours later being like, oh wait, did I ever finish that? <laughs> so, you guys in Sunday school, I know you're talking a little bit about prayer, and prayer is something we do all the time. And so to help you think more about prayer, do, what did you guys set up? Do you remember what's out here in the narthex? Is there a new prayer wall? Yeah. So grown-ups, if you haven't seen it, we have a new prayer wall. If you go out in the narthex, you turn left like you're going down to the Sunday school kitchen. 
And it's right there on the bulletin board across from the office. And there are lots of ways that we can pray, whether we pray out loud or quietly, whether on our own or whether as a group. But we can also write our prayers down too, right? That's a good way to pray. And so I know you all have been working on this, writing down your prayers. I'm going to invite the congregation to help. What do you think? Sound like a good plan? Because when we write down our prayers, we can then help share that with others. So we're not going to write it down, but let's pray together. And how do you think we should pray? Should we pray out loud or quietly? Quiet. Should we pray with our hands thrown out open wide or held close to our chest? What do we think? I see Ethan's voting for chest. So if you will all fold your hands with me, whatever that looks like for you. And we're going to pray quietly today. And repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together today. For blessing us for loving us and listening to us. Whether we pray quietly or out loud. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys go off to Sunday school and make sure you check out that prayer ball and add your prayers to it. I love watching them. They're all so good friends. <laughs> Peace be with you. Which among you is the greatest? No? No one? Is it our tech team? Our musicians? Our council? Our newest members? Our oldest members? It's me, right? Hard pass. <laughs> this question, who is the greatest, plagued the disciples. It is noted at least three times in scripture that the disciples are arguing about this question. Now, three is rather a lot when we think about all the things that the Gospels don't say. And yet at least three times it is noted that the disciples are concerned about who was the greatest. So what does it mean to be the greatest? What do you think? To be a leader? The most is expected of you? I don't think the disciples thought that. <laughs> Anything else? Be proficient, in what you do. Be proficient in what you do? Maybe better than average? Maybe they thought it meant they would be saved first? Or they'd be the most popular? Or they'd be dubbed the most devoted to Jesus? But Jesus does not define being the greatest as that. In fact, Jesus defines being the greatest as being the one who welcomes and serves, being the, the least. Jesus says to be the greatest is to welcome the little children, to give knowing that they do not return the favor, to help knowing that at this time in the world, children held no status or influence, to include the children knowing that they were just another mouth to feed at that time, because to Jesus, children are our greatest demonstrators of faith. And why is that? Because they are not afraid to ask questions. They are curious to know more. They experiment without fear of failure. They're sponges, soaking up everything that they can. 
and giving so much in so little. A simple Ninja Turtle coloring page, a smile, a fist bump. But children also don't overthink or get bogged down the way adults do. The kids believe and they do the way that Jesus teaches us to. Now, at this point in his ministry, Jesus has been teaching and preaching and healing for quite some time. This message about discipleship is not new. And instead, Jesus is saying, we are moving into the time where I am going to have to die, and so we're going to have to talk about that. And so Jesus begins the passion predictions. And this is not something that they want to hear. Last week, we heard a passion prediction, and Peter said, Jesus, don't talk like that. What do I hear? And does anyone remember what Peter, or what Jesus said to Peter last week? It was one of my favorite lines in scripture. He says, get behind me, Satan. Don't tell me what to do. This week, we hear another passion prediction. And the disciples hear it, and instead of arguing, they clearly just have questions that they're not willing to ask. Whether that's their own fear, their own, like, let's not repeat what Peter did last week. But while Jesus seems to be so concerned about everybody else, the disciples seem to be only focused on themselves. Jesus says, I'm going to die. The disciples say, yeah, but who's the greatest? Doesn't go so well. The disciples just don't seem to get Jesus' teachings. Right? We hear in scripture, they clearly have questions, they just don't ask them. And it's a pattern not just in our scripture for today, but in scripture as a whole. Jesus makes an announcement. The disciples misunderstand. And Jesus turns around and teaches again. Over and over and over. It's what we still do in the church, right? We teach, we preach, we proclaim. We don't always get it. And we turn back to Jesus to teach and preach and proclaim again. Now, even though Jesus could have been furious, right? The, I just told you this, and you still don't seem to get it. He pauses, and he takes the time to teach. He says, all right, first one didn't work. Let's try again. Let's try a different way this time. Maybe they'll get it with a kid here. So in trying again, Jesus says, so you want to be the greatest. You have to be the least and the servant of all. It is not a popularity contest of who is on the top, but it is about who is on the bottom, who will care for the children and welcome all people down here. For in welcoming those down here, the children, the outcast, those the often overlooked, in welcoming them, you could be welcoming me. And in welcoming Jesus, we welcome God. Jesus proclaims that to be the greatest is bottom up, not top down. To be the greatest is to build a community from the bottom up, lifting up all those that God created. This is Jesus' mission, to create that community built on love for all people, the children and adults, the insiders and outsiders, those who get his teachings and those who don't. Jesus is working to build a community where all are loved and all have what they need, where all can learn about and be seen as an image of God. That mission of Jesus is the same calling that we have today. Because over and over again, Jesus is teaching these fundamental lessons, using different words and stories and actions, hoping that just maybe we'll start to get it to understand the unconditional love of God, to embrace God's grace and to share it with others, 
to welcome all people as those created by God in God's image, to lift one another up from the bottom instead of pushing each other down from the top. The people closest to Jesus didn't get it. How often do we not get it either? How often do we forget that Jesus teaches us to love one another just as God loves us? How often do our own ideas of being the greatest get in our way of welcoming children and strangers? How often does our need to be popular or successful or better than others get in our way of creating this community that Jesus asks us to? Pretty often, if you ask me. But the grace and the gospel and the good news of it all is that God loves you anyway. The disciples don't always get it, and we don't always get it. And yet God forgives and loves and calls us to try again, to keep going, my beloved. God invites us into the waters of baptism to be washed and clean of sin once and for all, once and done. But that's not enough because God also invites us to the table to taste God's grace and forgiveness as often as you eat and drink not just on Sundays when we gather for communion, but every time you eat and drink. God keeps showing up in new and different ways, as evident in our God moment chain, trying to reach us and help us understand that it is God who is the greatest, teaching us to lean into vulnerability over strength, forgiveness over anger, love instead of hate, lifting people up instead of pushing them down. May we keep seeking God and striving to understand that greatness is our God. Amen.
Let us affirm our faith in the greatness of God using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God, who sees and knows all things, who hears our prayers and listens to our cries, we lift these, our prayers, to you, out loud and silently in our hearts. God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord, who makes every day new. We thank you especially for the sustaining goodness of your creation, for the gifts of healing and forgiveness, for the gifts of relationships with others, for the communion of faith in your church. For what and whom else do we thank God out loud or silently? Glorious weather. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of might, renew this weary world. Heal the hurts of all your children and bring about peace for all in Christ, Jesus, the living word. We pray especially for our bishops, Elizabeth and Tracy, our missionary, Kristen, and our pastor, Courtney. For those who govern nations of the world, for the people in countries ravaged by strife or warfare, for all who work for peace and international harmony, for all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, for the believers of Christ in every land, for those in need of healing and comfort, for what and whom else do we pray out loud, pray for out loud or silently? For those dealing with COVID. God of grace. God of grace, we cry out to you and pray for all those in need, knowing that prayer changes lives. For what else do we want to pray to God? God of grace, hear our prayer. God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden and through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. You may share a sign of that peace with those around you.
We give thanks for the ways that you are an offering to this congregation. Gifts can be left at the back of the sanctuary, given online, or mailed to the church. Let us pray our offering prayer together. Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Holy God, you alone are holy, you alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We give you thanks for your dear son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way at the table and to the end, we pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering, within this meal and among your people throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your spirit, in your church without end. Amen gathered into one by the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us in whatever language or translation is most familiar, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. For those of you communing at this time, the body and blood of Christ given for you.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Receive this blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. A few quick announcements today. Um, for the next month, we are doing a food collection for the Ponds Food Pantry. The big black tubs are back out in front of the fireplace. Um, and so donations can go either in the tubs or in the shopping cart. We are trying to collect over 500 items. If we collect over 500 items, then we get to do something with Thrivent and there's a chance that they will donate $500 to the Ponds Food Pantry. So the quicker we do it, the better the chance of that match being. So 500 sounds like a lot, but when you think about the number of soup cans or the number of cans of tuna, it'll go really quickly. So if you can please bring in any donation that you're able to do, check for coupons, check for sales, um, and let's help restock the food pantry because um, I know that they are always, always in need. Nothing in glass and nothing perishable. Um, so yeah, so make sure shelf stable, canned meat, canned soup, Thanksgiving is coming, boxes of stuffing, uh, things of gravy, um, things like that, they will greatly appreciate. This is kind of our Thanksgiving collection. We're starting it super early this year. Um, so if you normally give it Thanksgiving, please consider giving now. Two more things, knitting. If you are a knitter, that is all due back next week. We have a growing collection here. B, do you know how many we're at? 65, 65 for 65 years, look at that. <laughs> we're at 65 sets of hats and scarves that will be blessed next week. Um, so please, please bring them in. If you are trying to finish something, please let myself, let B know so that we know if there are more coming, if you're not able to get it to us on Sunday. Lastly, Thrive, we have a ton of Thrivent shirts from the last couple of years. 
Um, and they are all in a box sitting in the narthex right near where you picked up your bulletin. If you have any interest in one of the softest shirts you've ever worn, please take them. If you have a loved one you want to give one to, please take one. <laughs> We are trying to get rid of them. They will get donated in the next week. So if you would like one, please take one. That being said, go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.